that masks be worn indoors by vaccinated and unvaccinated. Um, we are recommending that as of right now. It's not mandatory, but committees will be meeting this week and next week to kind of discuss it. And depending on what happens and how bad the numbers go up, it may get to the point where we will be mandatory indoors again. So we'll keep you updated on that as we hear from the bishop and Sinan and the news.
A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. 
And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. The reading is read responsibly. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. Evil will bring down to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. A reading from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the faith of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread which your ancestors ate, and they died. But one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of the disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he came from? It is the Spirit that gives life the flesh of Jesus. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. Now for Jesus, he knew that first who were the ones that did not believe, and who were the ones who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I told you that no one can come to me unless
Thank you. 
will be present in, under, and with the bread and the wine. Now you would think that if you read the Oxford Confession, it clearly says we agree with that, and we agree uh, with everybody at the time. And what happened? Dualistic thinking. We were against them, they were against us, and for all this time we've been sticking our tongues out at each other and saying, you're wrong. I won't talk to you. Well, the thing that unites us all is the people of God being fellow uh, sharers of the body and blood of Christ. It's what's central to all of life for us. And then after a while, you have to also, you don't have to, but remember that people aren't stupid. I mean, every generation before us wasn't as dumb as we thought they were when we were with their parents. And during the time of the Reformation, people understood physics. They began to get a little understanding of science, and they knew that you could not be, they could not be in two places at the same time. Now, this morphed into this food fight that we, we carried out uh, with science. Science said one thing, faith had to say something else. And for years, we fought that. It culminated in the 19th century, when in order to prove that we were right and science was wrong, and the funny thing is if you do any study about nuclear science and, and physics and um, worm theory and all that, science is proving over and over again that religion was right. After all, the Big Bang is simply creation. And from that, expands. Like we say of creation, expands love and grace. Peace, the respective universes expand. Because one side thought they knew something, they refused to share the crisis with Christ. Well, here's our gospel lesson for today. Jesus said the very shocking thing that those who eat and drink uh, my blood abide in me. And we have a quick reaction, don't we? And people who could not think other than black and white. Because if you take this literally, we would be cannibals of some sort. Jesus is not talking about that. He is not talking, because we're looking at the Gospel of John, he is not talking about Jesus just as Jesus himself, but he's talking about Jesus as the Christ. Remember the two natures of, of, of the Gospel. Jesus is both fully, fully man and fully God. Well, in the first three lessons, they're called synoptic. Do you know what that would be? Like a synonym and optic, you see the same way. They look at everything the same way. John looks at things differently. In John, he is speaking as the risen Christ. And therefore, if as Jesus, he said, I am this, I am that, people would be given to us. But if he speaks as the Christ, he can truly say, I am the bread of life. I am the truth, the way, the life. I am the door to the gate. Because he has the authority, being alive after death, where nothing can stop him from keeping his promises, he is able to save us. Is it any wonder that the people who are still thinking in black and white at the time of Jesus, this illustrates well, what, what I've been saying about black and white thinking. They looked at heard Jesus literally and said, well, these are hard sayings. I can't do that. This is crazy. And they walked away. The Bible's not flat. It is Christ speaking. When he speaks, he is not talking to you about physics, natural science, or anything else. When he says something, it's because he can speak to us unconditionally out of love and to do basically whatever he wants to do. Unlike us, who can't do that. So here we have Jesus saying to people, this is if you want to be a part of God, if you want to be a part of his people, this is what you do. You share the bread, you share the cup. And there you are. A bunch of people walked away from that because they could only think black and white. And you know what the big surprise of this? The biggest lunkhead of all the disciples, St. Peter, who is a blowhard, who tells him that Jesus he will stay in writing forever, he's beginning to have to fill his container with something other than black and white thinking. He listens to what Jesus says and says, Lord, you have the words of eternal life that we have come to believe. See, that's a step way above black and white thinking. That is understanding God can do and be, be present where he wants. One of the greatest points that uh, Luther had with uh, Zwingli, the 
big difference in thinking that is that's thinking truth. That's thinking that God is capable and does love you. And me. And that's it. Thank you. 